<laughs> Hi. Hi. So I today am struggling with my own child and it's only day two of summer vacation. And I know a few things to be true that change in schedule and anticipation of things to come can be dysregulating for him. Um, I have not been medicating him the last few days, so he's not on his normal medication. And we have some construction workers at the house, which to an eight-year-old boy who it's very exciting. So there's a lot going on. <laughs> and I also know to be set up for success that we can't just like hang around the house, right? He's not that type of kid. And we're not, neither one of us are going to be thriving in that or in the green in that situation. With that all said, there are some mornings where we have to stay home. Like I have this meeting with you right now and I had a babysitter come and get him at 1030. But like just even those three and a half hours this morning, it was up, down, up, down. And the problem I'm having right now is that he keeps going outside and talking to the people who are working, the construction workers. And I've locked the door. Mm -hmm. I've asked him not to do it. And, and this is not new. This has been going on now for like three weeks. Mm -hmm. And so his impulse control, he can't control it. He literally cannot control it. And like there are times we'll be sitting at the table and he'll just get up and walk over to open the door. And I'll say, Ari, Ari, do not open the door. And then I, I literally, Betty, I have to scream mm -hmm. Ari to get his attention. Yeah. And I hate it. I hear you. And I don't know what to do. And like just now he did that and I brought him back and I put my hand on his chest and I said, buddy, take a deep breath. Cause he was going to the library. The babysitter just showed up and he wanted to ask the babysitter did you hear the drilling? Did you see that? Isn't that so cool? Like all three of those things are firing at a hundred degree in him all at once. Mm -hmm. So I put my hand on his chest and I didn't even, I just said, please just let's take, we have to calm down, which I want to, I want to note with you. Is that even something I should be saying to him? Cause I don't think it even resonates what that means to him. So then I said, I took a deep breath mm -hmm. and I got really quiet and I just said, just breathe with me. And he immediately went to the blue. Mm -hmm. Like he kind of zoned out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like Miss Maeve, who's one of his paras from school and a babysitter, she, I, I could feel her watching me going, oh, this is different. Like, right. And I just kept my hand on his chest and it gave him a minute just mm -hmm. to like bring it from crazy town to green, blue, green. And then he went right back to like talking about the library. Exactly. Yeah. Just yeah. like that, <laughs> you know? And I know what's going to happen again. He's going to go like, he's fixated on this and I get it, but like, it's not safe. And his dad has spe specifically asked me, don't have him out there. He's distracting them. It's not safe. Yeah. And yeah. So that's where I am. Cause like I lose it. I get triggered multiple times a day, if not multiple mm -hmm. times an hour. Mm -hmm. And I hear myself and it's like an out of body experience. I'm yelling at him mm -hmm. and I don't know what to do. And so I feel like I need some tools when we are in the house for how I can handle this. Cause we're going to have work done for the next month. Mm hmm and he has a summer camp next week in the morning. So that'll be fine. And then we will come back and he will be tired and he will take a nap. But it's like, I don't know. It makes me feel crazy. Yeah. It, yes. And the suggestion that I have for you is not going to be easy with the triggering. But it helps your triggers. Okay. Okay. So when what's happening is he's, he's got some stress going on. He's excited, but it's stress. It's positive red zone. And what you're trying 
your tool has been to counter him by calming him down. And that can actually work for some kids. And it didn't work. It put him in blue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and that's mm-hmm. not what you're looking for. You're looking yeah, for- Yeah, he just zoned right out. Yeah. yeah. So what you're, and then he goes, pops back into that positive red yeah. because it's still all stress. Yeah. So rather than countering for his particular nervous system in this particular situation, you'll want to go more into matching. Okay. So you're going to match his excitement and you're not necessarily going to match the intensity of what he, where he is, because you don't want to reinforce that intensity. Right. Right. You just want to match his expression, his excitement, his like, yes. And this is the other thing is you want to find yeses. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That also is going to help you calm down. Okay. When you say no and you yell, you raise his anxiety and that lowers his ability to suppress his impulses. Yeah. He will have a higher ability to suppress his impulses if he has joy, good feelings in his body. That's going to increase his capacity for suppressing impulses. Okay. So what you do, I'll let you write if you need me to let you write. Yeah, one second. So the yes increases joy, um, allows for better options or better opportunities. Yes, gives him good feelings and that increases his capacities. We call them in the neurorelational framework, we call them functional capacities. Okay, so. So the joy increases functional capacities. For impulse control. And and this particular one is okay. the capacity to inhibit. To inhibit. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so when there's, okay, yeah. Okay. So now when you're saying yes, you're right there and you, you match the expression. You want some intensity because when you go opposite, then he has nothing You're polarizing. So he has to go keep going in the same direction. But if you Mm -hmm. match, you're holding with him the feelings and he doesn't have to hold them so tightly because you're holding them with him and he can relax, Ah. relax those feelings more. So you're like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. It's so amazing to have these people here drilling and hammering it's like this is your dream come true Ari this is amazing how can we enjoy this while we also let them work and focus on what they're doing okay so we're presenting the problem not the solution Because your solution is not one that he's going to like. No, it's not. (laughs) But he might come up with a solution that he can handle. So like, what? how can we really take advantage of this exciting opportunity to watch construction happening right before our eyes? Yeah. Without distracting these guys so that they can do their work. I mean, I said that to him yesterday. I said, oh you can go sit in the car. I'll put you in your car seat and open the door and you can just watch. You gave him the solution. I know. <laughs> but that's, that's okay. That's what moms do, you know? That's but developmentally, a- I don't know that he would get there. And maybe that's fine. But That's like- okay, because we're not, we're not actually looking for him to come up with a solution. We're looking for him to have the problem to chew on because mm-hmm. that's, gonna, that's gonna open up again those functional capacities more because now he's got a puzzle to solve and he he might just be like 
going back and forth between what you're saying. Let them do their work, be able to watch, let them do their work. Like he's going to have some real mental chewing gum there, <laughs> to, I love that. you know, and that's what we want. We want to get him. We want his executive system of his brain to be engaged. So mom stops solving and Ari start problem solving. Yeah. And just thinking about the problem is enough. Right. So you're so, with him. And then now if he can't, and, and you want to give him enough time, what were you going to say? No, I'm interrupting. I'm sorry. You go so ahead. You want to give him enough time in that executive system engagement of reflecting on, you know, first of all, how great this is. I thought I turned do not disturb off. Oh, no, I did not. Okay. Um, so reflecting on how great this is. You want to give some time for him to experience the joy with you. Shared joy is what that's called. Mm -hmm. You want to give him some nice shared joy time. It's going to feel real good. He's going to get some endorphins going. He's going to feel like he's got the fuel now to think about the solution to this problem. So we don't just jump into giving him the problem. We first start fueling his capacities with joy. Fueling. Mm -hmm. Capacities with joy. I love that. Yeah. So where my mind is going right now, and I have been doing that, and I've noticed a huge oh difference of wow. like I've noticed a huge difference with him and I when I feel like what we were talking about last week with it's all about co-regulation right mm -hmm. and how so when he comes up to me and he's like mommy 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 I need I need I want I want you 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 I'm like I know <laughs> and I want to make my coffee and then I'll be right there and he dances and he's <laughs> so excited and so it it works That's and then great. His dopamine receptors go, I want even And then he wants it, like it never ends. Okay. And so, which is Let's fine, break down. maybe, Let's break but that like, down. I'm also going to this place of like, oh yeah. Okay. I'll, so you say what you want to say. Okay. So he, you say, I know. And then he dances and then what happens? Walk us through it. So then I, I have to, so I know I cannot wait to come sit with you and look at the sports schedule. Yeah. Let mommy make her coffee. Okay. So he'll go away and I say, please get out of the kitchen. Please let me do this because otherwise we've got fingers everywhere. He's um, all over the place. So that so, was a solution. So what could you do, buddy, so that mommy can make her coffee? How, how can... Uh, you like, how can I make my coffee and you enjoy yourself? How can you have fun right now? And mommy maker, like yeah. both sides, I want to make my coffee and you want to have fun. What can we do about that? Okay. Okay. So let's say I said that. And then, then we're back, then we're on the couch and we're looking at the sports schedule. And then inevitably something will come up. I have to do laundry or okay. yeah, some, you know, life is, and I oh told him, no, it's time for me to do laundry. Oh, you're going to be so disappointed because you want me to stay here and do this. What are we going to do? All right. Everything needs to be a question. <laughs> okay. What can we do? But, but with lots of drama, right. Lots of expression and really feeling into his feelings about what potentially could be going on with him. When you say it's laundry time, you jump into those feelings of disappointment and frustration or whatever you think is going to happen. You feel those feelings for him. And that, because though that's the joy, and then you bring up the question. 
And then if I were psychic, I would say I would run downstairs to get the laundry and he would then bolt outside to check on what the guys are doing. Yeah. Then you say, so now I think what's going to happen is I'm going to go down to the laundry and you're going to want to go outside. Not that you're going to go outside, but you're going to want to go outside. What are we going to do about that problem? How are we going to, you know, you, you really need me to help you not go outside. Don't you, isn't it so hard for you not to go outside? Don't you need my help? How can I go down and get the laundry? And we don't have a new problem of these guys being distracted because it's so exciting that they're here. It's so fun. <laughs> and he might not know, but he, he might just sit there because he might really want to go outside. And you could ask, would you want to come down and help me bring the laundry up? He might say, no. Hmm. I don't He'd know probably say you. yes. Oh, he I mean, would? That would probably for him be like, yeah. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's so, okay. So then I, then where my mind goes is like, it can be really intense to have him literally following me. Yes. Here's the everywhere thing. Everywhere around the house, touching me. That's what I thought you were going to say. So always here's, interrupting me. Here's what's really meeting. important Okay. for him as an autistic kid. This is really important for you to put this in this time in right now. Okay. You go down with him and you get the laundry and you come up and you set you have set him next to you and you set him to work unfolding. You are going to be so disappointed if you don't do this. He needs these skills. And he's not going to get them, I promise, at 23. He's just not. Unless right now you are sitting with him, folding with him. You know, you're doing it. He's going to be glancing at you, most likely, as you fold. I mean, he's not going to be able to fold. He'll, he, he doesn't. He doesn't well, have you this give him. You give him just the underwear that you don't care how well it's folded. You give him the the washcloths. And you slow him down. And, fold, you know, you show him, I'm going to show you how to fold this. And you let him fold it his way. Mm -hmm. and it's fine the fact is the fact that he's sitting with you concentrating on a task is building his functional capacities all right his so that's the goal of this summer we're building functional capacities mm -hmm. you're gonna you're gonna build his functional capacities in motor development and in focus and concentration And in routines, routinizing what the way that we're doing something, all these things are really important to development. And most of our kids in our society are not getting this valuable, you know. And then celebrate it with joy. You folded your laundry. Thank you so much. Isn't this beautiful that we now have this orderly, our, our clothes are all orderly and we can put then you go and you put them away together into the drawers and he's going as as you do these things he's not going to be having his hands all over you he's not going to be all hyper because he's going to build his ability to focus and he's going to be way more pleasant for you to be around yeah and I keep coming back to this 70 30 percent because there are times especially Totally. When we are home, if he's going to continue to go to the front door, I'm going to lose it at some point and say, Ari, come on, buddy. Now, when you do lose it, what you want to try to do is use soul speak. Do not use English. Because ah, do it in a different. You're not going to teach. And when you get flipped. Say that again. So when I lose it, you don't get to speak English. You only get to speak gibberish. And he'll know just what you're saying because he he's heard it a million times in English. 
and okay. he'll laugh and the laughter will increase his ability to Im inhibit his impulse to go outside. And it will be far more fun for him to not go outside now. So he's not going to be resisting the discomfort. His way of resisting the comfort is to try to get more dopamine. He's going to try to go outside to get those good feelings. You're giving it to him right there before he's gone outside. And that's going to satisfy him much more. All right. A lot of work. And I'm happy to give it to him because I know obviously, right, this work we're doing is so novel, even though it's very common sense when you just when and you ancient. think about it. And it's um, ancient. And it's ancient. That's how right. hunter gatherers raise their children. Totally. And and it feels like a lot of work because it is, because it's just me. And I don't have oh yeah. I don't have well and it's not just that it's just you it's that you're in a different mode you're in a different uh, mental mode you're in a get it done mode yeah and that's yeah that's the tide that you're in like you're in the current of get it done get it done get it done get it over with get through this so that we can do this which is not like the next thing is just another thing to get done right so it's just a illusion that our society is under and it's a, it's like a curse that we're all living under like not true you know it's this is if this is you know my intern Asia says if you're going to fold laundry fold laundry right like you don't have to work, get it done the getting it done is it that's the right. life that you're right. trying to get to right that's beautiful just remembering to be in the moment and that and it feels so to good rush through the moment it feels so yeah. good to sit with a child and fold laundry and have them engaged with you it we feel so good and it feels peaceful yeah it feels peaceful and I, for everybody yeah. And I mean, I, I look at this time with Ari as such a gift. Like I'm not, yeah, you know, it's, it can be very intense and mm -hmm. it can be very intense because I don't actually give him 30, 70, right. I give him way more. Yes. <laughs> and so <laughs> yes. I give him and way he's autistic. More. So that's why, you know, they yeah. require more because they need co-regulation way more than your typical kid. Yeah. And I'm trying to teach him that word, co-regulation. Yeah. And so I'm trying to like help him understand that when he's, yeah, really amped or mm -hmm. even, I guess I should just say, when he continuously tries to go outside and outside and outside and outside, like, come on, let's co-regulate together in here. <laughs> like, not that that means anything to him, but I, I think eventually. You're talking to yourself. Yeah, totally. <laughs> he doesn't need the word, but you're just. 100%. Yeah, you're just talking to yourself. <laughs> he just needs joy. He just needs joy. Mm -hmm. You're right. <laughs> and he's really simple in his needs you know he doesn't need we have more toys than anyone could ever need and he barely touches them he just wants my yeah sing, my attention he wants your co-regulation yeah he wants your he wants to feel connected to you because that is what regulates a nervous system better than any toy yeah, I mean, he is the poster child. Regulator is another human being's connection. Yeah, and I think that probably you know he he we he's been with me you know ninety point ninety nine point nine percent of his entire life has been like within arm's reach of me. So that makes mm -hmm. all the sense in the world as to why 
And all the difference in the world. I know. No, I know. He and has I an incredibly stable nervous system for the challenges that he's up against because of that. Because of you. One, and I, I know it, but I don't often give myself enough credit for it. But it is it is very true. And everyone around, it makes me tear up, but everyone around me even is like, he wouldn't be like what you have given him mm -hmm. is everything. He would not be where he is. He is so amazing. He is, really is just a phenomenal child. Yeah. Thank you. Ah, oh. yeah. Okay. He's, thank you. he's, he's still learning all the things that a lot of eight-year-olds already have totally and he's going to learn them he will yeah. learn them and he's yeah. you know and he's teaching me that too right that everything happens like there's no it, it's up and down it's back and forth it's top to bottom and I appreciated that so much when you said um last week when you were like because he's also been talking like a baby a lot this mm -hmm. week like mm -hmm. out of school he, the baby talk has come back and it's mm -hmm. like you were saying when he's dysregulated, he's no longer, he may no longer be where he was developmentally. He might yeah. have gone. He's not eight anymore. Yeah. If he goes to six, if he goes to two, that's where you beat him. Treat him like a two-year-old, treat him like the six-year-old he really is in this moment. Because right. that's what's going to support his development is to meet children where they are. And that kind of brought me to this other thing that I wanted to speak to you about, which was like expectation versus standard. And so I've really been trying to not set the expectation because it only ends up frustrating me. Yes. And so like to tie into what you just said, if I, if he's acting too, I have to drop the expectation that he's eight. Yeah. And, and then I have to set the standard for what a two-year-old would do. Right. What a two-year-old so, needs to learn what a two-year-old needs to learn mm -hmm. yeah. and then teach that and then you probably will see him jump up to six yeah hey, what does a six-year-old need to learn and then you'll get him back to eight yeah or whatever developmental age he is and it's interesting too because like clearly he's a he's a pleaser he wants to please so like he wants to achieve those things and yeah you can watch I mean he's like he's he was we should do videos of him he's a poster child of this like he immediately he's like yeah I did it let's do more you know um but yeah. that was just so helpful but I think um you know as I start to do my own coaching down the line mm -hmm. talking to parents about expectation versus standard there can be confusion because they're very similar you know, so like, I'm, I don't know, or maybe they're not, but like, I, I try not to say what I'm catching myself is you can change the word standard to just learning. So you can say behavior expectations versus behavioral learning. Okay. Because sure. The reason I use the word standard is because parents are like, how can I, ex you know, when do, when do I just get to expect my child to do this or that? And I say, well, you expect them to do it when they do it, but you can hold the standard that that's where you want to get to. Okay. And teach to the standard. Ah, uh, I don't teach to an expectation because the expectation isn't appropriate for their level. So how would you, um, this would be a good question for our quiz. How do you, or just in general to help mm -hmm. people, how do you set the def What's the differentiation between teaching to an expectation and teaching to a standard right it's it's very it's slight right it's not really slight but it's just oh. that when you're thinking about an expectation you get frustrated when they're not already there you might get frustrated if you're if they're not already at a standard but that means you need to get rid of the word standard okay if you if if the word standard helps you shift your thinking from this is where they should they should be so I should be able to just sit back and when they're not there I feel inconvenienced that I have to come in and correct them we correct children to us to a expectation mm. nobody wants to be corrected no and I feel like that 
I thought about that yesterday. I was like, do you think Ari in somewhere in his mind feels like he's just micromanaged all yes. the time? Yes. And it's, yeah. it's stressful. It's yeah. Stressful it's stressful for me. And I can't even Everybody. imagine what that would be like. And it's, yeah, it's and stressful I hate for that. a human being because for his human experience. beings need autonomy in order to be happy. That's just a basic human drive is towards autonomy. Okay. Having your own agency to make decisions on your, you know, for yourself. That's a basic human requirement for happiness. So that can be a whole nother video, how we set up situations for him to have autonomy and be successful. Yes. Without yeah. me micromanaging, helicoptering, hovering mm -hmm. for safety, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay, back. So if, so if standard is causing me to have this field correct, then I need to change. To learning. Okay. This is a learning. This is a, just lessons. Okay. That makes sense. I only that use the word st standard because I want parents to move away from the word expectation. And yes, you can have your goal. It just shouldn't be an expectation. It should be a goal. So that's why I'm calling it a standard. Like you have the standards that you, your family need is all working towards, or the values is another word I use. Ah. These are your family values. We are all working towards these values. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that feel, okay. That makes more sense. That makes more sense. I think. It's a lot of people. standard it's not working let's, let's switch it out <laughs> okay that. yeah I love lessons and learning yeah okay yeah. good all right I, I can be done with standards because okay. it feels very rigid and gross yeah okay and I love that that we're not working towards an expectation we're working toward a goal because expectations I my interpretation of that or my understanding is you have an expectation it's met and then you just stay there goals are like always fluctuating yeah yeah and changing and fluid uh-huh cool okay so we're gonna build his functional capacities with a side of, with a big helping of joy through joy we're gonna build his functional capacities <clears throat> And then I'm also going to start to really work on his autonomy. And so you're going to build up his joy. And then we're, you're going to present the problem to flip him into his executive. Uh, build up joy. His executive brain, his executive brain network. Mm -hmm. Flip the problem to his exec. Or flip network. his nervous system into his executive. Mm -hmm brain network so he can then consider or reflect on a dichotomy a you know this or that we need this and that and we need to be able to blend them it's like taking a paradox two different pe person people's needs that seem opposite and then integrate them somehow so that we have a solution that makes everybody happy. Mm. And we want to do that again and again <laughs> and again throughout his whole life. Oh, yeah. Everyone happy. That's He's going to get good at it. He and is. He's able to work for some country, <laughs> talking to other countries, and solving big problems that seemed not to have a solution because even countries are ha having a trouble with that. <clears throat> yeah, it's so um, interesting, you know, like giving, empowering him, just like I, like we were talking about last week, how would I want to, how do I want to feel? I want to feel empowered to make choices for myself. Mm -hmm. And when I do that, 
it feels good and I want to do it more. Yeah. Yeah. And he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to set me off. I know that. Yeah. It feels like that. it at the time. I, I know that too. And it happens. I mean, if I were videotaped and fast, you know, and like that sped up motion of my whole day, I would look like a crazy person. And he, you know, following him around, managing him, micromanaging him, yelling at him, losing my shit, calming down, blah, 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 you know? Yeah. So <laughs> that movie is happening all over the world <laughs> in households. That is exactly what people are dealing with everywhere. Yeah. Especially with kids. I mean, with typical kids, but especially with kids who have developmental delays and a difficult time regulating their nervous systems. That's just what it's looking like right now. Yeah. Oh, I shouldn't say right now. It's what it's been looking like. Yeah. And it's probably going to get worse. I feel. I know we, as, as we get more stressed, we mm -hmm. just keep seeing, we seem to get more and more stressed. I feel like there might be a tide change there. Mm, I hope so. Hoping, yeah. I mean, I'm doing my part. Like I could have Ari scheduled out to the nines. I could have him in everything possible. I don't have him in anything mm -hmm. because I don't need to put that stress on him. Yeah. You know, like I see so many parents with neurodivergent and neurotypical kids who are like in swimming and art classes and karate and all these things. And maybe for some kids that tight, tight schedule is really what works for them maybe I don't know but like it just I think we're just trying to build a, a busier society it just shows people that they can't relax that they have mm -hmm. to have something going on totally. all the time totally yeah. and that that's how you regulate a nervous system is by being busy 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 and then getting exhausted and burnt out right right that's not how to regulate a nervous system it's not sustainable no no, we should talk about that in our, our next video. Okay, <laughs> write that down. I'm going to. <laughs> um, so like the, let's see. The art of teaching relaxation or of not being busy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah getting accustomed to non-busyness, getting accustomed to peace. Mm, as a family and as an individual. Mm -hmm. And it's really about initially about tolerating peace, being, you know, conditioning ourselves to tolerate relaxation because the nervous system has a hard time tolerating that when the, it's conditioned for busy. Totally. I mean, tell, hello, I just had to go on a 10 day yoga retreat to get yeah. it for the first time in eight years, mm. you know, like, and I, I made a commitment that I can't, I mean, I joked, I was like, I can't wait another eight years. And everyone's like, no, you can't. And I'm like, no, but really like I signed up for a weekend and I, I understand my privilege that I can like say I'm leaving for the weekend, but the importance of finding that time where I can totally shut down from all of this and it's not out of lack of love. It's out of an understanding that my nervous system needs to just bring it down. Yes. I need to not make decisions, you know? And so then I, I have to remember too, that Ari's little body needs that equally. Yeah. Or more so. Or more so probably. Yeah. He's yeah. That's great. That's great that you're doing that. You're keeping him home and you're giving him this opportunity to develop through joy and reflection. Yep. It's interesting. You know, I had, we did ABA, I guess we did it last summer and the year before, and I had a mostly very positive experience with it. Um, but I'm going to make a new post-it note about joy and reflection. It's just going to be right next to all my things, but I have one from when we were doing ABA and I don't know that it's, I can re I can reframe it, but it's remember the replacement behavior. 
Mm -hmm. So they really teach instead yeah. of no, no, no. Yeah. They, mm -hmm. you know, find a replacement behavior. Yeah. But what I'm hearing you say is I could help Ari find what the replacement behavior is. So he yeah. can be part of that. Yeah. Because when they told me that, yeah. Because when they told me that, I was like, ah, duh. If I don't want him doing this, he needs to do something else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. But like, now what I'm also learning is I want, and he's capable now of learning and, and, and participating in what that something else is. Mm -hmm. So giving him the tools. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And I, you know, I'm, I'm getting through this book, the NRF, and I'm like writing all the notes and I'm highlighting all the things. And I just, I'm going slowly because it, it's right. like, it's sinking in with me. I mean, I haven't even, I'm halfway through step two and I'm just like blown away by these qualities of engagement. <laughs> I haven't even gotten to step three. Mm -hmm. um, That's awesome. Well, as low as you need to go. It is, it is and it isn't. I would like more time to, to spend on it, but. Mm -hmm. um, this could be the best way to really, uh, absorb it is to take a little bit and then live your life as it integrates and then take a little bit more this could be ideal yeah because clearly I keep bringing up in in session with you and in session with the group it's all about co-regulation and yet I I keep bringing up the match their affect and yet in practice it's still so hard for me in the moment to like get there yeah sure because you're triggered you've got a lot of static <laughs> in the way and that's so real and normal yeah we have to unlearn our learning about what it means to raise kids be in the world in general we have to unlearn this idea that what children are doing is not okay right and learn that what the children are doing is exactly what children do that's how they are <laughs> and they get to learn from there right yeah, that's, I mean, that's a whole, that's another thing that, that's a whole nother one that you and I talk about is how really helping parents understand that, like, mm -hmm. kids are where they're meant to be, like, mm -hmm. talking about really meeting people, kids where they are, like, yeah. I think that would be a, a, a great yeah. thing. Okay. Oh, thank you, Betty. It's very calm. You help co-regulate me in these sessions so much good, because good. there's this expectation that I've set for myself that I, the shoulds, that I should be able to not lose my mind and not flip my switch. And so then when I do, I really beat myself up. Mm -hmm. and that's very not helpful. Typical, very typical cycle for people. Yeah. yeah. Of course you're flipped out. You're dealing with all the learning that told you that this is not okay and that this is actually dangerous, that this is a really big problem. That's part of our societal learning. And it's new learning that this isn't serious. <laughs> this is just development. It's just, this is the way it's supposed to be. Right. Like if we didn't serious is going on here is my favorite Byron Katie quote. <laughs> I love that. And it's like, if we could remove ourselves from modern society and we didn't have to worry about money and we didn't have to worry about all this stuff that we think we have to worry about, it yeah. would just be what is, it would just yeah. be, you know, there would, sh sure. There would still be safety concerns and things of that nature and teaching right and wrong morally and ethically. And, you know, but like, yeah, we don't realize that we're actually succeeding. We are doing, we have a house and we have food. Yes, we have to keep doing things to maintain it, but everything's actually okay. Right. Like, when do you get to slow down and say, ah, I made it. I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I have this kid. Yeah. Oh, I did it. Instead of trying to manage him, how would I just enjoy him? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Oh. See?
seems like we're on the right path. Yes. <laughs> so you've got some great ideas for what we're going to talk about next time. What do you think you'd like to focus on? Um, I think the talking about meeting kids where they are for my own benefit and for other parents too. Um, I feel like that's kind of like the cornerstone for where everything else yeah. op we operate from. So if yeah. we can't meet them where we are, we can't employ any of the other learnings of the NRF. Yeah. It's like the seed. Yeah. It's like, right. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Let's do it. We'll see you cool. next week. Okay. Thank you.